Okay, so shall we get started? Um, With me. Well, time, yeah. Okay, so uh, welcome uh, everyone. We're very happy to have you join this conference. So I have to admit we are somewhat overwhelmed by uh, uh, the um, interest in the community. The original plan was to have a somewhat smaller meeting, but then uh, it appears that people resonated very well with the idea because clearly there have been many exciting developments, uh, which is a kind of amazing since uh, okay, the original prediction of uh, Wigner crystals goes back to more than 80 years ago. And then there have been a lot of uh, theoretical work still, uh, many uh, unsolved questions, uh, very interesting experiments, and uh, we'll see a lot of very exciting work uh, which has been taking place during the last few years. So um, I'm glad to see that many of the people here have uh, who joined us actually have done very important work on this uh, subject in the past, and I apologize uh, that we do not have an opportunity to have everyone to speak, but we, as you noticed in the program, there is time for kind of free discussion. So we will really appreciate suggestions like raising interesting questions or uh, making uh, insightful uh, comments about the talk. So um, welcome everybody. And I, yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Okay, so I wanna echo Eugene uh, in welcoming everybody. Uh, as you might have seen that uh, this mini symposium was organized rather in, in an impromptu fashion, but uh, we actually have truly a remarkable list of speakers. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone to, for agreeing to give a talk in such a short notice. So thank you very, very much. And I would also uh, like to introduce two other organizers of this mini symposium, Yo Jo and then Ilya Estelis. They actually did bulk of the work, so we should thank them for their hard work in terms of organizing this symposium. Ilya and Yo, do you want to give a brief introduction about yourselves? Uh, so, sure, yeah, so I'm Ilya. Hi, I'm a postdoc uh, working with, with Eugene uh, at Harvard. Um, and yeah, I'm also you know, very excited <laughs> to see how much enthusiasm and interest there was uh, in this topic. And you know, I think I'm really, really excited to hear the talks and also, you know, people's uh, thoughts about the various subjects. So yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, hi, I'm Yo. I'm a postdoc in Hong Kong Parks Lab. And, uh, and I also want to thank everyone for coming and also uh, accommodating our schedule request. And uh, thank you very much. We look forward to uh, hearing about your talks after the discussion. So as you will see that uh, Yo and Ilya will give a talk in the later this afternoon. And so uh, you, will, you, know, you will have a chance to see them yet again. So I would like to then give the virtual podium to the chair of the first session, Una Kim from Cornell. So Una, you can take charge. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be chairing the session. Um, our first speaker is Philip Kim. I guess we don't need to introduce him. <laughs> So, Philip, I'll give you a um, five-minute warning towards the end of your hey, talk time. Good. Great, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Donna, for introductions, as well as thank you very much for the organizer to give me a chance to talk in the um, uh, this workshop or symposium. And um, the... Title of the symposium is a rather broad and but mostly focused on the uh, 2D systems and strongly correlated states in the 2D system. I think a lot of the exciting story of the Wigner crystals will come up. Uh, uh, I think that's kind of one of the uh, recent, uh, the new discovery uh, that comes out into the this system. So we'll hear about a series of the talk, but I want to actually uh, start with a somewhat uh, different angle, but uh, sharing that this is a strong correlate uh, the physics in this 2D system, um, especially in the form of the bilayer. So if time permits, probably I will just try to cover two stories. Uh, both of the stories are related with the fractional quantum effect 
and combinations of the fractional uh, quantum refactor gain or superconductivities. And these are the, my uh, collaborators. Uh, the first part of the story that uh, was mostly carried by the Xiaomeng with in collaboration with JU, uh, uh, <clears throat> Andrew Zimmerman, then and, uh, in collaboration with the, our uh, Columbia uh, team uh, led by the Corey Dean and Jim Hon. Um, and theory that uh, both helped in actually uh, just help us uh, greatly to understand the system. Second part of the story is led by Under uh, Go and the Yuval Ronan with the other collaborators in the team uh, with the theory uh, collaboration with the Ashwin Viswanath group. Okay, so, well, you know, the fermion can uh, the paired each other or kind of form the more com composite structures and turn into the boson and often the uh, composite bosons made of the fermions can condense and can create the beautiful uh, the, the macroscopic quantum effect such as superconductive and superfluid. So we, we are uh, familiar with that uh, fermions can uh, create something more correlated state by kind of pairing. Uh, in fact, in the, uh, in the atomic uh, uh, molecular optical physics that uh, one, where the one can tune this interaction between the fermions uh, using fresh uh, resonance, demonstrate that this correlate states uh, or condensate state of the composite fermion can be even tuned, uh, 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 composite boson, sorry, that can be tuned in the, uh, between the BEC and BCS limits. And some of the, this idea even carried out in condensed matter system. For example, if you have the excitons, uh, which is also viewed as a composite uh, boson based on the electron holes. Uh, if the exon is long lived, and if you can control the exon density, one can imagine to create a uh, very similar exon condensating state that can uh, span the, between BEC and BCS type of part. Um, in condensed matter system, however, exciton, for example, is not a ground state particle such that uh, creating those kind of reliable thermodynamic state has been uh, quite challenging, although there has been uh, quite a progresses uh, in this field. However, there is a, also a tweak that one can use uh, to make the ground state uh, exon like the state. Um, that has been actually realized using the magnetic field and from the Landau level. So imagine that I have the two 2D layers uh, separate with some insulating layer. There is no tunneling between them. Uh, and apply the magnetic field and create the Landau level in the both of the layer. And uh, rather than fully fill the Landau level, if the both of the Landau level in the uh, two layers are partially filled, but complementary partially filled, uh, by simply making projection between these two Landau level, you can see that they behave like one single Landau level if the distance is very small, which means that uh, the thinly separate this the two layer system with partially filled Landau level at least can behave like the one single Landau level if the interaction between that uh, the electrons both of layers are strong enough such that uh, uh, electron in one layer is can couple the whole in another layer, right? In this type of view, once it happens, globally it look like they just kind of quantum system, feel the Landau level. So you expect to see that uh, edge state carry this uh, dissipationless currents and all the quantum physics can be measured if you just measure uh, this two layer together. However, if you just look at in the detail, they, they, they forms with this kind of the uh, collective exciton, electron in the one layer and hole in another layer combined together. In fact, if you just write down the uh, corresponding wave function, wave functions with proper choice of the ground state almost look like the uh, exciton in ground state, which actually condense. So there's a good analogy that one can use exciton condensation with this, uh, the, uh, uh, quantum or bilayer partially field, or you can call this a magnetic exon condensations. This beautiful idea, in fact, has been realized experimentally already more than 15, uh, more than uh, uh, 20 years ago or close to 20 years ago. The series of the experiments that uh, carried out, uh, for example, uh, Jim Eisenstein groups uh, demonstrate that indeed this uh, two partially field Landau level cl uh, getting close uh, behave like the one single Landau level and there's a drag of the drag effects the sending the current in one layer that affect the, uh, the resistance on other layers and uh, this the drag effect is quantized and series of experiments that beautifully show that indeed existence of such a uh, condensation state. Perhaps a more exciting experiment one can also do is uh, sending the current in one of the layer and return the current to another layer. This is what we often call the count current, uh, count, uh, uh, current flow geometry. And uh, in this particular case, 
while the current is returning, so the, uh, there is no net current is flowing in one direction to another, but nevertheless, in terms of external flow, because the electron and hole is moving in the same directions uh, in the uh, top and bottom layer, in terms of extent, this is extent flows more like the uh, dissipationlessly, uh, such that kind of superfluid state of the, this condensate extent can be proved in such a way, as demonstrated in Mansour Sayed's and Sayed's group some, some years ago in Gallium Arsenal. So we know that uh, forming these uh, two layers under the magnetic field, that one can form the uh, excellent condensation state, which you can view that uh, very strongly correlated electron hole um, between these two layers. And of course, in the new era of the Van der Waals materials, you can repeat very similar experiments using the 2D material. In particular case that uh, graphene, the quality of graphene now improved a lot. So the mobility of the graphene sheets are almost approaching to the best quality of gallium arsenide. Uh, yet, you can just put this uh, two graphene layer very close by um, using boron nitride separation layer. So you can repeat this experiment where that basically creating this excellent binding energy is even stronger, right? So the experiment can be done with even higher temperature because excellent binding energy is tend to be stronger. Uh, therefore, in principle, that you can even just map the, uh, the phase diagram of the dissection condensation. So that was recently done uh, in collaboration with uh, Corey Dean's group at Columbia. Uh, so I will show you that uh, some of the data here. Um, so let's say that uh, we fill this both of the graphene layer partially filled and, but uh, as a total filling, it becomes kind of full filling. So half and half or that uh, three quarters and quarter filling in the both of the layer. So total filling keep we as a, just total filling one, right? But then using the magnetic field at the same time, uh, temperature at the gate, we can always keep this, uh, the, uh, both of the Landau level is uh, the, uh, partially filled to the total filling one and change the temperature. And measure the counter flow resistance as our experimental probe to uh, just showing the condensation. As I said, when condensation is happening, you expect to see the zero counter flow resistance. So we can call that this condensation phase. If there is no condensations, uh, if you drag out the condensations, of course, then it's uh, just partly filled uh, the uh, Landau level, uh, con seriously connected, so it is resistive, right? So roughly the phase diagram, experimental phase diagram is showing here. This is magnetic field and the temperature, as you see here that in the low temperature, dark blue is the zero resistance, zero counter flow resistance, and turn into the, this, uh, the finite counter flow resistance. So we know this is condensations, non-condensations, uh, but the important part of the, this example is, as you change the magnetic field, that phase boundary between condensation to the non-condensation is actually changing in a rather interesting way. In fact, uh, this is almost a dome shape that I showed you that uh, the, um, what is excellent condensation phase you should look like. Uh, for the more detail, if you just cut through this, uh, the phase at the constant magnetic field and how the temperature dependent of the this phase transition should look like, you see that, uh, the, in the low magnetic field versus high, high magnetic field, uh, transition behavior is uh, very different. In a sense, in the uh, low magnetic field, transition is rather broad. As you go to the high magnetic field, transition becomes really sharp. It, in some sense that if I just call this as just a resistance rather than counter flow resistance, it looks like the almost superconducting transition look like. Detail of the study that we made, in fact, to show that indeed, uh, you can just show that this is more like the BC, like, uh, the regimes where you expect to see the broad transitions, and this is more like the BCS uh, transition regimes where they, you expect the rather sharp transitions. Uh, I don't want to go for the detail, but at least this tells you that by just using the magnetic field, which can control the, uh, the, the, the magnetic extent distance, um, one can just demonstrate that we can sweep uh, through the, this phase diagram in this example. So that's a good starting point that I can demonstrate it uh, that we can build up this uh, strongly electron correlated system in the quantum or bilayer system. Now, next question is, what if I just drive into the extreme quantum lanes, such that if you go to the low enough temperature and go to the high magnetic field, what do we expect to happen on this system where you just kind of drive the correlation even stronger? Well, just to, to do this first step, let me just briefly uh, uh, to remind you about the uh, what we expect in the just the simple fractional quantum effect because that's basically our framework, right? So if you have the, just a single layer and drive into extreme quantum limit, high magnetic field, low, temp low enough temperature, 
beyond that, just the integer quantum effect, you start to see that uh, in between partially filled lambda level, there's even strong uh, correlation effect appears, what we call the fractional quantum effect. The modern way just to look at this, one of the way they look at this fractional quantum effect, especially there are many, many state appears there, including one third and two third and many others, uh, it simply can uh, categorize using so-called flexure attachment to form the uh, composite fermion. Especially in this, uh, in the middle sequences here, uh, you can just use so-called the two flux attached to composite fermion, where that two the uh, magnetic field is attached to the electron uh, to make the state of fermion, and this fermion can form its own Landau level, which actually provide the sequences of the additional the uh, fractional sequences. So that's kind of typical way we can just uh, explain. The recent experiment done in Coriolis group, actually they did uh, this beautiful experiment, just put these uh, two layers close by, as I just explained it, uh, bring that to the extreme quantum limit, and they measure the Cobino uh, resistance uh, uh, conductance, which actually easy to detect this bulk state appears. And here's what they got. Once you just put the two layer together, you start to see that uh, the appearance of this correlation state is a rather different from single layer, right? Um, first of all, that in the middle, that especially partially filled Landau level, you basically have the insulator, right? But that is kind of expected if, especially if you measure the bulk measurement in uh, uh, the, uh, this correlation. This is basically external insulator, uh, the magnetic external condensation I was talking about. So that basically Covino measurement to give you the zero, uh, zero conductance there. But then many of the, this peak that you start to see that uh, there is uh, some corresponding peaks, uh, the, uh, the uh, correspond, uh, the quantum or fractional quantum or state, you can see that something like uh, one third, for example, two fifth and three seven, and that, that's the uh, same sequence in the, the uh, electron side, shows that, uh, well, that kind of repeating of the quant fractional quantum or state one state seems like they are appearing here. So simple idea is maybe these are some, something like simple two independent copies of fractional quantum or effect not correlating between the two layers. That could be, but Beyond that, there are more states that cannot be simply explained by just uh, each of the fractional quantum state. So for sure that we know there is a, some sort of the correlated state in this uh, 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 composite fermion space. How do we understand that? In fact, there is a, the, uh, the, the scenario is possible that when you just do the flux, uh, flux attachment onto this composite fermion, uh, you can actually share the one of the flux, so-called the interlayer flux attachment between the two composite fermions in between the two layers that make the correlations, create the yet different states, which actually does not exist in a single layer. And potentially some of the state we are seeing here is evidence of that. How do we actually prove that? One way you can prove that is, again, that you just measure quantum or drag or the, uh, the uh, uh, counter flow measurement where that you can just detect the entanglement or the connections between uh, the charges of the object in the top and bottom layer. So here's the experiment. So we made a whole bar uh, out of these two samples. I, I, I basically, it's a very similar sample I showed you before, except that now we just bring it to the extreme quantum limit in the magnet lab. So go to the high magnetic field and low temperature and just do the whole uh, the drag measurement and, and drag measurement means that I send the current to one layer, measure the resistance or the voltages in the other layer. If there is no connection at all, then I expect to see the basically zero drag. If there is very strong connections there, then I start, start to see the strong uh, the response of the drag, and especially some quantized drag if there is a, the, um, uh, the uh, strong the, uh, the quantum correlation happens. So what you see here is, for, for example, half the Landau level is a typical the excellent condensation state I just mentioned that we have the strong drag response to quantize it to the equal one as expected. So this has been seen before, we've seen here. Uh, but then about the one third, I just mentioned each of the layers one third comes out in our drag response. Basically we get the zero drag, which means that both of the layers indeed just separate the, quant the one third quantum hole. So it's kind of boring. However, say two, fifth and three seven, you start to see that instead of you have the, uh, 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 the zero, uh, when each of the them shows is a zero quantum hole, uh, the uh, G, zero RXX showing the quantum hole, but drag response is not zero. In fact, it is quantized into the some numbers, uh, one or some fractions of the two third. 
So certainly there are some interlayer cor uh, correlation between these composite fermion states in this kind of, uh, uh, in these cases. It turns out this composite fermion state can be explained by the, uh, the one fl interlayer flux quant uh, the attachment onto the, this, uh, the composite fermion that we have. And using that, and just using John Simon theory, that both helped us a uh, lot to understand this one, indeed actually can explain this uh, quantized the response of the black hole response. And the states that we are seeing here is a two fifth is a related to interlayer composite uh, uh, fermions quantum states, basically filling factor two of the comp uh, composite fermion filling states. More exciting part is uh, this uh, three seven where that uh, the, uh, this can be interpreted as half year, uh, uh, one and half year Landau level, composite fermion Landau level, uh, interlayer uh, flux attached composite fermion Landau level, and axon condensation of the depth, those lambda level is what we are seeing with this response. So this is a yet another hierarchy up than what we are talking about. So it's a strongly, strongly correlated system in some sense. I think that's kind of very exciting uh, new uh, development that we are seeing there. In fact, uh, even more exciting part is the, the, the state I just showed you is just a balanced two layer, basically the same feeling. But once you just unbalance that, you just populate the electron more onto the one layer and the hole in the other layer, but complementary way, we start to draw that phase diagram even more complicated way. So this phase diagram that I'm showing you here, uh, showing the uh, RxX drag response. Zero drag response means that there is a, some uh, co uh, the correlated states that appears. Uh, and as you see here that uh, along the central line is uh, all the state I just showed you before, like the half uh, and the three seven, two fifths and one third and the one, uh, one quarters. And then uh, those kind of states actually is there. Away from there, you start to see that those states actually start kind of evolve into the um, in continuous fashion. And that was kind of rather surprised because in some sense, you can explain all this line um, simply considering again, the same, uh, the uh, composite fermion pairing pictures across the lambda level, right? Uh, sharing this interlayer flux attachment. You can see that uh, given that this in, uh, interlayer flux attached composite fermion lambda level filling, uh, there is a states appear with uh, this, uh, the, along this line but it's not necessarily continuously because it's all kind of integer numbers. So we can see that there are series of the this states that are dotted uh, along this line, but we are clearly see there is continuous line actually evolving there. What does it mean is in fact, along this line, at least when I just fixed one of the, this, uh, the composite uh, fermions of uh, the lambda level uh, filled up and let the other level can be continuously varied I still can have the discorrelated states as a remain as the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, remain as a quantum correlated states. What does it mean is basically I'm just creating the continuous states uh, that uh, the pairing between composite fermions in one of the level to the uh, the quasi particle on another level or anions of the another levels and form this rather uh, weird quantum particle and still we can pick up those kind of things uh, throughout this. Um, uh, the uh, drag measurement. So the long story short, basically we are seeing that throughout this one, uh, we still see the quantum response or quantum drag measurement here, but only half of the quantum drag measurement where that we have the uh, composite fermion reside. Uh, the other side is not quantized, but only one layer is quantized, but still the drag response is quantized based on this uh, theory. So I, I think this is kind of new discovery we have. Uh, telling us that indeed we start to create this kind of rather strongly correlated system in the both the top and bottom layer. In some sense, the next thing that we can just uh, ask is, what is uh, the nature of this uh, new uh, uh, the composite uh, particles we created? Uh, so in a sense, anions combined with the another anions in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the another layer, what is quantum nature of the, this type particle? What is the quantum statistics of the, this particle? And this is something that we need to kind of explore further. So that's kind of one. Uh, interesting part. Well, now, how much time do I have? Ten minutes, I guess. I don't know. Um, you have, you have ten minutes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Great. So that was uh, all right. So, um, so that's kind of first part of the story. But second part of the story is now um, instead of I'm combining the fractional quantum state in one layer. 
But what about, uh, to another fractional quantum world state, uh, what if I just uh, try to combine fractional quantum world effect with another very strongly correlated, uh, uh, potentially correlate uh, system such as a superconductor? Well, there, there's actually good motivation why this could be interesting. Uh, in fact, uh, some years ago, Xu Cheng Zhang actually uh, was one of the first uh, that uh, uh, proposed that uh, if you just uh, approximatize a quantum anomalous whole effect with the superconductors uh, and, and, and the thread vortex across the superconductor inside of this uh, vortex, uh, basically you will see the Majorana, uh, the uh, zero mode is there, in a sense that a quantum anomalous whole effect is uh, the, uh, introduced uh, to just kind of make the, this, uh, the, um, the uh, topological superconductivity. But in some sense, you don't necessarily need uh, the quantum anomalous whole effect. You can just create uh, this very similar effect with uh, quantum all states, as long as the superconductor can withstand the magnetic field that uh, create this, uh, the, um, uh, the quantum all effect. In fact, this idea is quickly just expanded. What if that you just uh, that use the not only quantum hall, in, integer quantum hall, what if you just expand it into the, this, um, the fractional quantum hall states? And that turns out then this uh, topological exciting states at the, at the inside the vortex of the superconductor is not the Majorana, but it's generalized that uh, of the Majorana. It's more like the non abelian anions, the generalization of the Majorana, which called the parafermions. The difference here is unlike the Majorana where that uh, the, uh, it, the square of the Majorana uh, operator becomes one. Uh, in this case, it have to uh, multiply the M times where M is basically the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, fractions of the, this, uh, the composite fermions. So that's, uh, that will create quite kind of interest because in a sense, this is one way you can create a yet different type of the, um, uh, the non-abelian anion in the system. Not only the, uh, the, the theoretical, the, uh, the deep theoretical interest, in fact, if you just harness this uh, parafermions, uh, there is uh, some theoretical proposals that this can be used as quantum computing, even universe, uh, toward the universal quantum computing because Majorana is a while that, uh, that's, uh, Ising type of the, um, uh, the uh, non abelian anions. Uh, this parafermion is basically that uh, it's going the more of the degree of freedom one can uh, just manipulate it. So, the idea is uh, is it possible that we can uh, uh, combine the fractional quantum or effect with the superconductivity? Indeed, there has been some try. For example, in the Gallium arsenide, uh, the, uh, the Rockinson's group at the Purdue uh, just contact the, make the contact onto the 2D. Uh, 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 electron system in gallium arsenide with the superconductors. And they found that uh, they can just kind of do the uh, decent transport measurement, although that as you expected, this uh, reflectory metals of the superconductor cannot make the really uh, reliable contact onto the, this uh, semiconductor. So transport is suffering through the various start effect, but they actually demonstrate at least that they start kind of get this quantum effect measurement with the superconductors. For the graphene that where the, you can make the contact a little bit better, uh, with the superconductor. The difficult part is whether you can realize this magnetic, uh, the uh, quantum, fractional quantum effects where the superconductor still survive in the, its the superconductivities. So uh, this is kind of one of the challenges we are just trying to kind of address in this, uh, this particular system. The main part of uh, then, then we made a kind of decent success there uh, in the past experiments. Basically, we found that uh, the right superconductor make the good contact on graphene, such as niobium nitride contact that we can make the demonstrate here. And the, uh, the graphene can provide the quantum order effect up to the 10 Tesla, 20 Tesla. Uh, and then one can demonstrate indeed these combinations create quite intriguing uh, the signal that uh, relate the cross and the reflections, right? More recent experiments actually in the field that demonstrated that improved the quality of the graphene, especially encapsulated between uh, uh, boron nitride, again encapsulated by the graphite gates, the top and bottom gates. You can, general, uh, you can generate this fractional quantum order effect with this something like the 10 Tesla, 20 Tesla-ish, such that uh, this sort of combination can give us a hope that indeed we can combine uh, fractional quantum order effect with uh, the superconductivities together. So what do we expect? What do we expect is basically Andre reflections. So when electron hits the superconductor, we'll just kind of return back to the hole. That is what we call the Andre reflections, where that can be easily detected by just measuring the conductance between the normal to the, the superconductors. 
and then usually appears the enhancement of the conductance peaks when junction is very good. When you expand that into the quantum R system, however, now the electron path is just confined along the quantum R path and it's chiral. So basically backscattering is not possible. In quantum R uh, system with a superconducting combination, especially when superconducting lead is, lead is very thin, you the Andrea reflection is not happening in the same side, but it can happen across the superconductor such that hole can be grabbed from the, the other side of superconductor and hole can be just streaming down through the downstreams, which actually can be detected by just kind of reading this positive signal onto the down, uh, downstream uh, signal voltages. So evidence we can just kind of pick up here is basically measuring downstream the quantum or edges and across this very thin superconductor and see whether we get this kind of positive signal out of it. So that's basically experiments one can do and expand that into the, quant uh, the fractional quantum or limits so whether we can see that indeed fractional quantum or edges can also create those kind of cross under reflection. So that's basically experiment and the what I'm going to present. Right. Caleb, you have okay. five minutes. Yes, good. Again, okay, the experiments, the, what we did is that improve the, our previous device such that uh, make the channel qualities even better by using graphite top and bottom gates. Um, so, and then install this the very high quality niobium nitride electrode. And uh, we measure simultaneously RxX, which actually tells us <laughs> about the uh, bulk quantum all, RxY, that what, uh, what filling fractions we are, we are having. And also more importantly, downstream voltage, what we call the R car, uh, which all kind of proportional to the, uh, the uh, all kind of related with this uh, the uh, uh, cross under process. The way that we can use it is just make the ratio between the RxY, between R car, uh, approximately that will give us the, the, uh, the idea that what is the probability of the, this, the cross under reflection is happening per the edge state impinging. So that is a, one of the impor important parameters we are going to use, characterize this uh, probability of the R car. All right, time is already a bit short. So let me just kind of uh, the, uh, jump into the important part. So what we measured here is basically measure the gate voltage versus magnetic field, all these uh, coefficients uh, that R car, Rxy, Rxx, right? So most important signal is R car, the cross under reflections, whether it goes to negative signal, right? And what you see here is they actually in integer, it becomes a negative slightly, or I'm going to show you the other bit blow up, but as you go to the fractions, the, this negative signal is even stronger. So it's clearly not only integer, but fractional quantum state actually create this cross under reflections. And second part is how that magnitude of the cross under reflections. If I just look at this, uh, let me skip this part, then skip this. Uh, okay, so if I just look at the um, cross under reflection signal for the integer in the relatively low magnetic field and normalized by the RxY to get the, uh, the car probability, what you found is that regardless of the any edge state, we get more or like the same probability of this uh, cross under reflections. And that is rather uh, strange because I think somehow this means that all the edge state impinging onto the, this uh, the superconductor, just regardless of the their spin configuration, any configuration, they basically do the very similar type of the cross under reflections. The experiment is a very strong evidence that as soon as you just hit this integer, uh, quantum all, they show the, the very same car. So this can be analyzed a little bit more carefully. And this analysis was done by the Ashwin's group. Um, Hassan actually plays a very important role. It turns out to understand this one, basically you have to really consider that uh, spin of coupling of the, uh, our superconducting contact. And once you throw this spin of coupling into the, uh, the, um, the superconducting contact, basically all these quantum energy states uh, only couple with its own counterpart uh, throughout this spin of coupling, even in the same spin orientation they basically spin of coupling, make the spin of it, uh, spin quantum numbers bad. So then you can make that this P wave coupling is possible across the superconductors and each individual, the edge state impinging on with its own counter counterpart will be basically make the P wave coupling the same strengths. And that's basically uh, the, uh, the way that we can explain that why across all this, uh, the integer state, we have the same basically car probability. 
Okay, so at least we the, in, we the, we gained that the uh, quant quantitative understanding of the what is happening on the integer edge states. What if we drive this into the real quantum state? I already showed you that in, once you get into quantum state, in fact, this car probability becomes even stronger. As you see here, as you increase the magnetic field, once the uh, fractional quantum state uh, start to appears, their car probability is as strong as integer or even bigger. Right, I think probably the better signal is shown here. So you can see that that uh, when I just get to the, the fractions one third, two third, and four third, uh, the compare with the integer, P car is even stronger. And as you go down to the, the lower temperature, that the, the tendency of this probability going uh, even stronger. So we start to see that somehow the mechanism of the creating this, uh, the cross under reflections for fractions is rather different from integer. So what is the difference? So there could be kind of two different kind of simple scenario that we can think about. When fractional quantum states impinging onto the superconductor, and I want to kind of create this cross anterior process. One way that I can do that is I will just kind of collect the, all these fractional charges to make the full electron, and then make the, this full electron just make this uh, cross under reflections and form this uh, the uh, the regular electron Cooper pairs, and then that the uh, the cross uh, uh, reflected hole in the, the other side, I just decompose again back to the uh, the uh, um, the one third charges uh, the quasi particles and sending out. But the other more bold idea is well instead of I can just uh, do uh, this uh, fraction uh, the way to bunching together to make the real electron. I can simply create this uh, the uh, Cooper pairs using the one third quasi particle, right? So that in that case, I don't necessarily need a bunching. So what's the difference? In fact, the theoretical analysis shows that uh, the one case or the other, especially when you have to make the bunching and anti-bunching cases, you expect to see that because of this process, uh, uh, as you go to the lower temperature, this process tend to be strongly suppressed. While that we just create this uh, composite fermion and repairs, basically it's at the reasonably temperature independent, or it becomes even stronger in the low temperature because in hence of the uh, coherence. So they, their temperature dependence can be quite opposite. Indeed, our experiment observations, I, as I briefly mentioned, as we deep get into the deep into the diffraction of quantum effects, uh, basically our car probability grows and grow, indicating that indeed it seems like we uh, uh, tend to be the favor, experimental data actually favor the process of the creating this uh, cross and uh, cross uh, composite fermion cross and uh, repairs into the system. So that's basically uh, kind of the, the possibilities. All right, so my time is up, so let me just skip this one, but just to summarize. So I'll try to give you just two story that uh, basically related to how to correlate this uh, composite fermions in the fractional quantum state. Either I can correlate with another fractional quantum states in the across the van der Waals gap to form this uh, the, uh, interesting paired state across uh, the quantum bilayer, or the correlate this uh, fractional quantum uh, the composite fermions across the superconductor forming this uh, cross uh, correlated and rebound state. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you. Um, let me, that was, you know, you know uh, for everybody else. <laughs> Somebody has to clap. I mean, that was an amazing talk. Um, we have five, six minutes for discussion. Yeah. Um, and uh, looks like, um, so let's see, Eugene has a question, right? And yeah, everybody else, if you have a question, please raise your hand, the, the blue Zoom hand. Uh. This idea of a condensate of quasi-particles is very interesting. Can you give any details? Like, where exactly is this condensate? Is it just where the edge state meets a superconductor, or is it extended? So, how do I think about this? Condensate? You mean the second part? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the I think the con. con I, I'm not sure that I can call this as condensations. I think that what what uh, I think it is more like this um, undrived uh, the uh, undrived bound state, undrived edge states form. So uh, typical undrived edge state, I can make this form by the the uh, the bubble of quasi particles out of the electrons, right? 
that form the electron mm -hmm. holes, right? But uh, the idea is, can I just kind of do that with the uh, the uh, the uh, compositor immunes uh, uh, quasi particle, right? Right. So, but yeah. But this yeah. requires like a new, a new order parameter, right? It's anomalous expectation value of quasi particle creation operators rather than the electron operator. Right. Yeah. Apparently, there is some some theoretical discussion, which actually I don't fully appreciate. In fact, actually, this uh, theory that uh, Hassan and Ashvin uh, just kind of mentioned, it is actually still kind of go beyond my head at this point. I don't know. I can just answer to you that uh, uh, in the more uh, qualitative way. But I'm simply think about, I think, experimental nice, uh, naive expect, uh, explanation is that what if I just simply replace the electron with one, one ter, uh, uh, one third of the charges and <laughs> try to kind of do that. But apparently that is probably not the uh, correct way of the describing, right? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, I don't see any other hands. Um, I, I, have a, I also have a question um, yeah. on that, uh, the last part. So you, you just mentioned that um, you know, theoretically, what does this mean is not, uh, is uh, maybe Ashvin and um, his group have idea, but it was kind of not, you're, you're not prepared to describe it. But I, I have a question like in terms of, uh, maybe this requires knowing why, how to think about this, but like what would balance, what would control between um, the two scenarios, right? You said, it's, um, roughly the temperature dependencies, you ex expect them to have different trends and experiments seem to showing the lower scenarios trend. Yes, it is. But uh, can yeah. you make the sample dirtier? I don't know, do something to make it the other trend. That's, a, that's, a, that's right. So I think uh, the uh, one, one, uh, one part of the this thing, uh, the, so, certainly I don't know what actually control between these two. I think that's a, some, uh, I have no idea. Uh, uh, at this point, it's experiment observations. Even experiment observation is a little bit weak claim, I would say, because we are, you know, the temperature dependence can come from various different regions. So it is favor here is a relatively weak favor. I think better experiments, the future experiment probably go through is uh, some sort of noise measurement, for example, right? So whether the bunching versus no bunching, I'm sure that uh, the, this will just give us different uh, signatures that in the uh, in the noise man measurement across uh, these uh, superconductors, um, so that's uh, something like the more uh, the quantitative measurement is needed uh, to really distinguish between these uh, two scenarios. But simply, I just kind of found that uh, the at this point it's just kind of wild speculations. Uh, but uh, the possibility of this uh, creating the Andre bound states, or <coughs> that even just kind of you can. Uh, uh, naively say the Cooper pairs out of the composite uh, composite fermions. I think that uh, that idea sounds like uh, quite exciting, um, and uh, at, at least in terms of material platform that we can have the something that readily provide the composite fermion states, as well as now we can readily also provide the superconductors. We can coexist into the same uh, material platform. Uh, this give us say that somehow combining these two two system that kind of push this uh, kind of pairing of the composite fermions that are induced by the existing superconductor might be interesting idea. But I think that's, uh, that's at this point the wide idea. And I'm not sure whether uh, our experimental data uh, strongly support one scenario to the other. Okay, now we have two minutes remaining. I would like to split that between Misha and Leo, if possible. Misha, <laughs> you go first. <laughs> Hi, uh, Philip, uh, very, very interesting talk. Uh, about the first part, uh, the uh, yeah. layer. Uh, so uh, one of the signatures of, uh, of this condensation was the uh, interlayer tunneling, peak in the interlayer tunneling. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, in James' experiments, I remember there was a problem or uh, not completely understood the fact that uh, the temperature dependence uh, would saturate. Yeah. Have you studied it here and what's the, what the Right, story? I think that's, a, that's a, the questions that uh, from the day one that we see that uh, uh, this quantized whole, uh, if uh, uh, the drag hole effect in this bilayer that uh, Jim, uh, Jim Eisenstein always asked me <laughs> when I give a talk. <laughs> Have you seen that uh, tunneling? Uh, short answer is we uh, haven't observed any tunneling currents uh, throughout this uh, two system, uh, two, two layers and uh, there, Bit of the difference that we can I can throw in that uh, the why that 
makes sense because gallium arsenide that uh, the confinement of the electron is weak and there is always a, a, some residual overlap between them. And in fact, most of the experiments need to be done by killing this interlayer uh, tunneling by applying a small amount of in-plane magnetic field to create a mu momentum mismatch. So in our system, the electron is rather tightly bound onto the graphene layer and uh, boron nitride insulating layer, although that's a thin, uh, the barrier is high. So generally the tunneling probabilities are fairly low. And moreover, that uh, we are not aligning this two graphene layer together. So it's a kind of a strongly misaligned in terms of case space. So simply that momentum mismatch is innated into the system. We don't necessarily even apply the in-plane in magnetic field to kill uh, the, uh, the tunneling current. So the, we have not seen the uh, tunneling current, but interesting is uh, the question still remained. Indeed, if they, you have the really strong uh, correlation between them, nevertheless, in very, very small energy scale, Still, don't we actually expect to see that some sort of the Josephson current type of the tunneling effects in there? I think we cannot exclude that uh, those kind of possibility, but we have not seen uh, the tunneling current uh, within our. So I remember I was estimating that. Uh, so for bilayer HBN, just if you have just two layers, uh, tunneling should be comparable to uh, gallium arsenide. What's, what's the thickness of your? So we are using about 2.7 nanometer. In, in fact, oh, the, we, are, we are trying to avoid the too thin uh, to avoid this, uh, the, the uh, tunneling current, right? But that trivial tunneling current is not what we are talking about, by the way, right? <laughs> so you want to see the really Josephson type of the tunneling current, zero bias peaks really big, right? That may not necessarily with the, uh, all the thicknesses. So I think uh, not seeing the generally no the single particle tunneling is not concerned. In fact, that make our experiment better because uh, I don't have to even just kill that off. It was not there, right? The why we don't see that this Josephson like the, con, uh, the, con, uh, the, con, uh, the tunneling at really, really uh, the, fine, uh, the small bias. So that is something that int in intriguing questions remained. All right, um, Leo, can you be really, 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 really quick? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. Uh, perhaps not surprising, I had the 